Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be answering your top 20 questions about York Law School. It's basically a big fat Q&A of all the things you have asked me over the last three years but also a few weeks ago I put out a post on my YouTube community page and on my Instagram story asking you guys if you had any questions about the law school and I've put them all into one big list and I'm going to answer them for you today. What is PBL and how is it different to other universities? So PBL stands for Problem Based Learning. We're pretty much, I think, the only law school in the country that uses PBL and it is pretty unique. It's a very different process to other universities on how they learn. So typically at a university, you'll have a lecture on a topic that will tell you everything you need to know really. Then you'll go and do independent research and reading. And then for the seminar, you will answer questions in a small group about the topic. And then some universities, you will go away and do an essay on that, others you won't. So at York, it is quite different. So rather that, than that process, we have a PBL cycle. So say for example, on a Monday, you will pick up a topic. You'll get given a problem. It will encompass two or three different areas of law. Then as a law firm, which is a group of like 10 to 12 students that are in your year, you will work through the problem using a set of tools, figuring out who the key parties are, their interests, what the key areas of law might be. And then you will find a set of questions that you will then go and independently research throughout the week. Midway through the PBL process, you normally have an interim session, which is ran by a PhD student or a master's student at the university. And basically you just touch base and say, this is what I found this week. This is how we're planning to answer the questions and whether it's right or not. And they put you on the right track. Then you also have lectures throughout that week that are related to the PBL scenario, but don't really give the answers you need to answer the questions in the scenario. You still need to do your own independent research and reading to be able to answer those questions. Then the following Monday, you will sit around with your group and feedback and you'll basically go through the questions in the cycle and say, well, this is what I found on this topic or that topic. And that's basically what PBL is. So obviously it is very different to other universities. It's very, very heavy on collaboration and group work. And it pretty much does put you in good stead for the workplace because it gets you used to talking in a group and presenting and capturing meeting minutes and, you know, chairing a group pretty much from day one. So it does throw you in the deep end a bit, but it helps you grow and progress as a student. Number two, what what is it like working with other students? How easy is it to settle into a firm? It very much depends on who you get. Obviously, there are 10 to 12 of you in a firm. The way they put us together is meant to have different personality types. So there is always going to be a bit of a clash, but at the same time, that is part of the learning experience. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that all the PBL work I've done, I absolutely loved and we worked so well as a group together because that very, very rarely happened. You know, there weren't people that contributed and there weren't people that turned up in my second year out of, I think the 11 or 12 of us, most of the time, there was three or four of us that actually turned up. Very rarely people turned up. And it ultimately just depends on who you get. In my first year, the group that we had was so like, focused and stuff. Yeah, there was a few personality clashes because everyone was quite strong characters, but in terms of dedication to work, most of us were there. So it really depends on who you get, but I wouldn't say that all of that necessarily hinders your ability to learn. As long as you're doing your own independent research and you contribute in class, like you'll be able to find out all the information you need to find out. How easy it takes to settle in also just depends on who you get and what type of personality type you are. I pretty much found uh, in first year and second year that within one session of 45 minutes, we pretty much were like a cohesive like unit. So it's pretty quick. Three. Is it important to attend a Russell Group University to get good career prospects? Obviously, my answer is going to be very biased on this because I went to a Russell Group University, but I would say that going to a Russell Group University certainly helps. It's not unheard of if you don't go to a Russell Group University that you will go and get a good job and you could go to a magic circle firm. But if you do go to a magic circle firm and ask everybody there where they got their degrees, chances are the majority of them will either be Oxbridge or a Russell group. So it definitely helps. And I think it's ultimately just because the standard of teaching is widely recognized to be great and the facilities are just much better and you get a lot more career opportunities at Russell Group University. So therefore you appear to be the better candidate, whether that is the case or not. I think that's why employers tend to prefer Russell groups if they do prefer them. Number four, does it matter what BTEC or A-levels you take? 
no. I think I'm right in saying that York accept pretty much any subject other than like the EPQ and like critical thinking or general studies, but don't don't quote me on that. You'll have to look at the website. But in terms of subjects more generally, I pretty much they accept anything. You don't have to have done law before. I did a, a B Tech in film, like a triple B Tech extended diploma in film, and I got in. So in terms of B Techs as well, they're not picky about them being specific type of B Techs or academic B Techs or anything like that. So pretty much you can just do what you want to do. So do subjects that you like and that you're good at. Number five, do YLS accept general studies in the EPQ? I think they accept them, but they don't like lower offers or anything like that for them. They just sort of like look good on your application. And so for example, if you've done an EPQ in a big area of law, that will look good, but it won't get you a reduced offer or anything like that. Number six, what do YLS look for in a UCAS application? So York actually don't really look at the applications at all. Um, they just check to see whether you're going to meet the grade requirements, which is AAA or equivalent. So they don't read your personal statement really. They, I think they just read it for like to see if it's coherent and grammatically correct and not absolutely atrocious. But pretty much they don't bother with the applications because they invite everyone who will meet the grade boundary to an interview. Number seven, what is the interview like? It's very short, it's like 10, 20 minutes. Um, I think there's like five or six questions and there's no like conversation between you and the interviewer. It's pretty much they ask a question, you fully answer it and if then they move on. So it's kind of quite like formal, but the questions aren't exactly like difficult or anything like that. I think the first question is like easing you in and they'll be like, why do you wanna do law or something on that line? Um, and then there's a few questions that basically assess how you think and how you put together arguments and it ultimately is assessing are you a good fit for the law school and is the law school and PBL a good fit for you so if you don't get in it's not because you're not good enough or not academically you know clever enough it's literally just because they don't think that this environment will be the best for you to thrive in so don't take it personally and there's always like a wacky question on the end as well wacky that's what they 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 call it. It would be like if the law school was a karaoke song, what would it be and why? Or if law was a sport, what would it be and why? <laughs> like proper weird questions that just assess how you think on your feet and how creative you are. If you want any more information on the interview process as a whole, I did a whole video on that and I'll link it down below. Number eight, how can I prepare for the interview? I wouldn't really say that you can. I think as long as you know what PBL is, because I didn't, not gonna lie, when I was on the train up to York, like for my interview, I was looking at the website and then it said something about PBL and I was like, what's PBL? I was so confused. And then I read about it and I was like, oh, damn, like they do this whole thing there, I best like know what it is. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I applied to York without even knowing they did PBL, so. <laughs> Don't do that. But yeah, I think as long as you know what PBL is and you have a basic grasp of how to form an argument and um, give you know a debate on one side of an argument, then you'd be fine. And if you think you want a bit of practice on that, the best way is to like go online and there's many, many, many debating sort of sites that have like loads of questions and then like for and against arguments for them. Uh, or equally, just read a newspaper and go to the opinions column, read it and see if you agree. Ask yourself, do I agree with what they've said here? Are they a bit biased? Is there holes in what they're saying? Ask yourself questions like that and you should pretty much get to grips with how to formulate arguments on the spot pretty quickly. But in terms of legal knowledge for the interview, you don't need to know any at all. It's pitched at someone who doesn't know anything about law. Number nine, do you need any legal knowledge before starting the course and what pre-reading can you do? So you don't need any legal knowledge before you start the course but I think that it helps. I've made a video on the things you can do to prepare for law school. I'll link it below. But in summary, it does help if you know the basics between the court systems, different areas of law, um, and what sort of is in each areas of law. And just to have a general idea and know the difference between a solicitor and a barrister, all of that stuff will help you out. But there is absolutely no point in going through textbooks and trying to prep for law school and trying to teach yourself what, you know, tort of conversion or trust law is because it will just fry your brain. That's what I did. I remember reading a contract law textbook in the summer before I went to law school and I almost talked myself out of going to law school because I was like, this is hard. And actually when you get to law school, it's pretty simple. Like they teach it step by step and it's okay. So they don't recommend doing any pre-reading in advance anyway. So number 10, what are the law facilities like 
on a whole, they're actually really good. So we have the PBL suite, which is basically half a floor in the law and management building, which is just for law students. You need key card access to get in and out. And basically that's where you have all of your like PBL, um, all of your seminars. And it has like study spaces in there as well. And that's all pretty new as well. I think that was only built really in the last 10 years. So it's pretty like modern. And then we have most of our lectures in the same building, but like downstairs, there's two big lecture theatres. And then we also have the mock courtroom, which you don't actually really use unless you're really lucky or you do mooting society. Um, and then you also have um, the piazza, which is also on campus east, which is where the law building is, which is like a secondary building. It has seminar rooms and a big, a big lecture theatre, which is like tiered seating and it all plush and nice. It was only built, I think, two years ago. Um, so that's properly new and nice. It has a Starbucks in there. Hands down my favorite building on campus. And you also have the Ron Cook, which has like food facilities in it. And as well as another big lecture theater and seminar rooms, which is also on campus east. In terms of the library, I think there's like, like eight rows or something in the library of books. There's, a, there's quite a lot of books. I've never been like hard up for books there. And equally, we have obviously Law Trove, which is like a Netflix subscription service for your textbooks. So you don't actually have to buy any textbooks. And also if there's not a book in the library, you can just speak to the library team and order it in for free. So, you know, the facilities on a whole are very good. Oh, and another thing which I didn't know about until I came, but is very good that I think about York is the print subsidy. So you pay a pound and you get 19 pounds back of printing credits and you do that, we can do that once a term. So basically you can print stuff off pretty cheaply um, throughout the year and you don't really have to pay for it. You basically pay like three pounds a year in printing credit. And I never really use the full like 60 pounds you'd get with that three pounds as well. So it's pretty good value as well that you have that. So number 11, um, lectures. How were they? Were they well attended and dress code? So there isn't a dress code. There were people in their like dressing gowns and pajamas in lectures. And I wish I was kidding, but I'm just not. Like people have no dress code at all for university. You can wear what you want, but equally there are always people that are in suits. So Wherever on that spectrum you fall, you will fit in and be fine. How were they and were they well attended? <sighs> very, very, very rarely well attended. It's always like in the first few weeks of term, they're pretty much in full attendance, especially in first year. And then within a month, there's like basically the core group of people there, which in first and second year was about 50 people. And in third year, because you all do optional modules that only normally have maximum like 50 people on them, most of those lectures had about five people in. So yeah, but it's because we have lecture capture. So all of those lectures are normally recorded. So you can just watch them at leisure on your laptop. And equally on lecture capture, you can like speed it up and slow it down. So you can like watch an hour's lecture in 45 minutes if you wanted to. Um, so I think a lot of people just choose to do that rather than like actually physically drag themselves up at nine in the morning and go to the lecture. They just sit and watch it in bed instead. And you can't really blame them. And how were they? So the standard of teaching for the majority of lectures was really good. You know, there's always lecturers that I personally liked probably better than others just because they suited my learning style. Um, and I can only probably count one or two lectures out of probably hundreds that I've had in three years that were bad. <laughs> and they're only bad because they're just boring. Like I had one lecture where um, she read from her own book for like 35 minutes and we were all sitting there like, what's happening I don't understand like why are we here we could have just she could have just set this as reading but yeah that was like a one-off really number 12 what are the students like a mixed bag they're not what I thought they would be like I had this vision when I went to law school that it would be like legally blonde where they were all like proper swats and they all wanted to like do really well and it would be quite clicky unless you were like a high achiever and wanted to do well and it's just not like that at all. Like quite a lot of the year is just like, best way I can put it is they're just like vibing, you know? They're just there for the fun time, not the long time and fair. Um, but a lot of people are way more relaxed about their studies than I thought they would be. And that kind of like got me down in my first year because I really wanted to be in an environment where everyone was really focused and that's just not the case. Like regardless of subject university, I think there's always people that are just like, there for the fun rather than the academia, which each to their own. Um, but yeah, like people on the whole, like most of them are nice. Like it is quite clicky, but I think that's only if you're on committee, like the law society committee, clicky, 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 no matter what year it's been. But that's, to, to be honest, 
every committee for a society at York is clicky in some way or another. There might be the odd one that isn't, but from what I've heard, they're pretty much all are, especially college committees and stuff like that. It's all just like a, a bunch of mates that go on it and then basically don't really like integrate with anyone and it's all like inside jokes and everyone feels left out. But other than that, um, most of the people are pretty nice. And within my first day, I like made friends with people. And I remember the first few people that I spoke to my very, very first day, I'm actually still friends with now. So most people on the whole are very, very nice and friendly. So you'll find your people. And if you don't find them within the law school, there are like 17,000 other students at the university. So you'll be fine. You'll find some people you like. So number 13, what are the lecturers like? Honestly, 50-50. So... Some of the lecturers are so nice and they really genuinely want you to do well and they push you and they'll give you like extra reading and they'll be there for you if you want to have a chat and like explain your career goals or ambition or that you're struggling. They're brilliant, they're really, really good. And they are the lecturers that have really like enhanced my time at York. But equally, there are also a lot of lecturers who appear to just not be bothered about being there, are not very student friendly, and are very unmotivating and also quite rude. So it just depends who you get and equally every person is different. They might vibe to certain lecturers more than others. So I wouldn't necessarily say that because there are, yes, there are some bad lecturers to let that put you off. I think it, all departments, all universities, all law schools, there is always some people on the faculty that people don't like. I think that's just a way, the way it is. Number 14, personal advisors, what should they do and are they good? So our personal advisors at law school are like our academic supervisors. We are meant to meet with them once a term for I think a 10 or 20 minute meeting and they're compulsory, you have them for three years. And those meetings are really just to talk about how you're doing, your well-being, and what career ambitions you have and how the law school might be able to help with that. Um, they're pretty good meetings, I would say, but you really need to like go in there and utilize them. Because if you go in there and you're just like, yeah, I'm doing fine, whatever, okay, you won't really get anything out of it and it'll feel very like a tick box exercise. But if you go in there with loads of questions, being like, this is what I want from you, this is how I'm feeling, hey, this is what I'm struggling with, da da da, da. and then ask them for like help on certain things, then you'll find those meetings to be a lot more helpful. And are they good? Like equally, again, it's a mixed bag on personal advisors because they're academic staff that help you. So my first PA in my first year wasn't very good. I didn't like him at all. He was quite rude and very unsympathetic when I was having my like, breakdowns. Um, so I switched and I got a new personal advisor for my second and third year and he was great. So, you know, ultimately, if you don't get somebody that you vibe with, I very, very, very recommend switching. A lot of my friends had personal advisors that they really didn't like. And I was like, just switch. Just just ask for somebody that you actually do get on with and have a good like relationship with because it will make your time so much easier. Um, so I'm really glad that I did that and ultimately, it, it's a mixed bag, it depends who you get, it depends on who you vibe with, um, but I wouldn't again let like a few members of academic staff that are like, mm, put you off. Number 15, what career support and work experience opportunities do you get? Well, <laughs> Well, 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 you get a lot. So we have um, Careers Chris, as we like to call him, Chris Wilkinson. He is the law school's employability tutor. He does everything to do with getting you a job when you leave university and getting you work experience in the meantime. He's brilliant arguably the best thing about York Law School. He sets you up with link days, which in your first and second year is a day of work experience at sort of a firm or a type of law, like if you're choosing, like you can have preferences to say, I, I wanna go and have a mini pupillage in crime. They're really great as well to get your foot in the door. I did a link day at a barrister chambers in my first year, and then it got me a week's mini pupillage after that. So they are really, really ace. And in terms of work experience opportunities, like there are a lot, there's a lot of networking events, a lot of like mixers, uh, Q and A's, panels, workshops, there's stuff like that pretty much like every week, two or three times a week going on. But it just depends on like what you're interested in. If you wanna be a solicitor and more specifically a corporate solicitor, you will have your fill of stuff. There is so much to do here. But if you want to be a barrister, there is less so. And if you want to do a law degree, but you don't wanna be a lawyer, which is, me, 
Um, there are even less sort of opportunities available. But having said that, you know, I found out about the civil service and some marketing jobs through the law school. So they sort of do help you. And equally, the law school may not advertise jobs and things like that, um, that aren't like law specific. But if you go and speak to Chris, because he is like the most friendly guy ever, if you go and speak to him, he'll like set you up or he'll know somebody who can help you or have a chat with you. So, you know, it's really helpful. And plus he'll do like mock interviews with you, look at your CV. So in terms of career, like you will be set. Do not even worry about it. Number 16, is it true that law firms like YLS graduates because of PBL? In my experience, yes. And it's primarily because as I said at the start of this video, PBL pushes you from day one to basically have all of these skills you need in the workplace. It teaches you how to chair a meeting, how to present in front of people, how to take minutes of meeting, things like that that you need to do in a job. You do that from day one when you're like 18. So when you're 21 and you're a graduate, all of those skills are like second hand. Equally the PBL process, it teaches you to look at a problem and decipher it and know how to work it out and, and get questions to then go away and research to be able to answer the problem. So employers really like that, I think. And generally, because we have to work in groups, people at York are much friendlier and chattier and more confident on a whole and employers obviously like that too. It's funny, like I have a story to sort of exemplify this. So when I was at Clifford Chance, we all got to go to the open day because we were on a mentoring scheme for Clifford Chance. There was a whole table of like, people from York and we got given like a problem and we had done it within the first five minutes and all the tables from the other universities were like still going and still going and still going and then we just ended up having a chat like amongst ourselves and like with some of the trainee solicitors there and when they came across and they were like are you struggling like why aren't you doing it we were like oh yeah we did it like ages ago what are you all about like we're waiting for all of you guys just because PBL taught us to like look at that problem and be able to go bang 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 we know the answers, let's move on. <laughs> and employers really love that efficiency, I think. Number 17, what is the ratio of coursework and exams and what are they like? So you mostly do coursework. I'll put the little stats thing here of each year, how much coursework and exams you have. But it is mainly coursework, um, which I personally preferred. I perform much, much better in coursework. The coursework consists of like reflective reports, essays, uh, case comments, they're rare, but you can do them. Um, you can do presentations and debates and an oral contribution in class counts towards all that coursework goal. And then the exams are like PBL. So you pick up the problem, that problem is your exam paper, but you just don't get the questions that you'd get in the exam. You use the PBL sort of cycle to figure out what the questions will be, research them. And then rather than coming back and feeding back with your group, you just go in the exam hall and sit the paper. And you have like one or two exams a year, they're very rare and they're very chill to be honest. I thought they were gonna be a lot more stressful than what they were. But it's quite easy to get a 2-1 on the exams, in my opinion, like you don't need a lot of revision. I normally just revised for like the 48 hour period from when you picked up the problem from then when you took the exam and I always did fine. So like, it's not that bad. Number 18, what module choices do you get? So in first year, you don't get any module choices. You do the six compulsory modules, which is foundations in law one and two, which encompasses criminal, tort and contract. You do EU, public, property, is that it? I haven't done it in forever, I can't remember. I think that's it. Basically, your foundational subjects, you do those. For those two modules, then in first year, you do legal concepts, which is like a philosophy type module. You do introduction to law and society, which is law in the world and issues it's facing. Then you do legal skills, which is like a practical module. Uh, you do mooting and meeting with clients and things like that. And then you also do the portfolio module, which you basically reflect on your year and how you found it and put it into a report. But then in second year, you get to choose one optional module. You normally have a choice of about 10 to choose from for that one. And then you also do foundations in law three and four. So you build on one and two. You do the advanced legal skills. So you build on that again. You do the portfolio again. And then you do professionalism and ethics, which <laughs> oh, I hate that module so much. It's so hard, um, which is basically just like philosophy and like the business place structures that you need within law. And then in third year, you get to choose purely optional modules, but you have to take one module that's like a case study. You have four options and then you just like choose one. And then you also do your dissertation, which is worth two modules. So then you get to choose like three. You get a choice of about 30 to pick for those three. You get a pretty good choice the later you go on th throughout your degree. But I would say the module choices, they're good on the whole, 
uh, and especially if you want to do crime or corporate, but if you or human rights, but if you want to do something a bit more niche like me, did want to do medical law, not so good. There's only probably like one module that you can do about that, but whatever. Um, number 19, what is the schedule like and how many hours for classes, lectures and independent study? So they say it should be about 40 hours a week. I think it's about eight or nine hours of lectures and about the same of like seminars PBL in your first and second years. And yeah, and then you're meant to make the up to 40 hours with independent study. Like in all honesty, you're doing way more hours than that because a lot of the weeks they would pile on the work uh, or they'd give you assessments like mid throughout term, which you'd have to focus on. So realistically, the average week was more like 50, 60 hours. Well, for me anyway, especially because I'm the type of person that does all of the reading and like all of the extra reading and all of that type of stuff. So for me, it was quite a lot. And in the third year, it completely drops off. I had an average of five hours a week, um, evenly split between lectures and seminars. And then the actual workload in terms of independent study was more like 20 hours a week. You'd think as the degree progresses that it would get harder, but honestly, it gets easier. And finally, question 20. What are the best and worst things about YLS in your opinion? So I'd say the best things are for me, I realized pretty early on that I didn't want to do law, but that didn't like stop me engaging within my interests within the program. I got to do my dissertation all on what I wanted to do and I got to sort of tailor uh, my optional modules and the assessments within those to things that I was interested in more. So I really liked that I had a lot of freedom and also in third year they offered sort of interdisciplinary modules. So I got to study art law, which was, was run by the history of art department as well as the law department. So I got to sort of study things that weren't necessarily law, like strictly law and just sort of broaden my horizons a bit. And I really, really liked that. I think on the whole, the worst things just come back to the staff. Like there are just some staff that are rude and disinterested and just won't reply to your emails. They like don't mark stuff. Literally I'm waiting for feedback for essays I did in my first and second year and I've like graduated, so it's not great. Yeah, on the whole, I think it's the staff that are probably the worst thing. But as I said in this video, there are also some really, really great staff members at the University of York and it ultimately depends, I suppose, on your experience and who you would vibe with the most. Um, so as I said, this whole video really is based on my experiences, is very subjective to me, but all the same, I hope it has provided some insight into York Law School and what it is like to be a student here. If you have any questions about the law school, put them in the comments below. If you want me to make a video more about the university generally, let me know in the comments as well. And yeah, hope you like this video. I will see you next week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.